My name's Matt Arno. I'm a consulting forester. I've been a forester for about 17 years. And what we're doing here is thinning the uh, trees to reduce the fire hazard. So that means that we're cutting most of the smaller trees that are a ladder fuel that would allow a fire to get from the ground up into the crowns. And we're also thinning the uh, larger trees a little bit too to leave the best ones and uh, reduce the competition for the good Ponderosa and some of the good Douglas fir. We've been working on this project for two days now and it's probably going to take us, I don't know, three weeks, two or three weeks, something like that. And some of the material you can see has been drugged to the road and we're going to uh, chip that up and the chips will be used in planting and plantings and other things like that. Some of the material we're leaving out in the woods for wildlife habitat and nutrient cycling. Uh, this little tree right here was a ponderosa that was up pretty close to that big ponderosa and the health of it wasn't very good so uh, we cut that one to leave the big ponderosa and reduce the competition and fuel hazard there. It's probably hard to see but see the top the top was damaged on it and you can look at these needles the needle growth isn't very long so there's something that's uh, affected this tree and it's not growing very well so the fact that it's kind of close to that big one and it's also not very healthy we'll just get rid of it and historically that tree would have never probably made it because fires would have been burning through here every 10 years or so and it would keep the forest thinned. All small trees that grew up that uh, had any fuel around them at all would get burned and the only ones that would be left would be the big ones and an occasional, occasional little one that would survive a fire. A lot of these other trees that you see were small trees that were down underneath these big trees and most of them have mistletoe which is a parasitic plant that grows on the tree and causes the tree to put a lot of energy into those needles and it makes it uh, a big broom and you can see that on some of the trees we've left standing behind here and it's okay to have some of that it's good wildlife habitat but it really causes a fuel hazard if there's too much of it because as you can see that it makes a lot of uh, dense needles that really burn very well if they catch on fire. We're creating a mosaic of different uh, stands, forest stands here, which is kind of a patchwork. Down in here, we're uh, reducing the fire hazard to a lot of these nice trees that are growing uh, toward the bottom of the uh, draw here. And we have a fire break that was created by the quarry, but up higher, there's some dense stands with a lot of mistletoe and it's almost all Douglas fir and that's all going to be left for wildlife habitat and probably if there's a fire it'll burn up but uh, like I said we're creating a mosaic it's not all going to be the same so there's different kinds of habitats created here and in some places trees hopefully will survive a fire because we're reducing the fire hazard in other places we expect that they'll probably burn. Fire suppression has made these forests grow a lot denser than they ever would have been historically. And then, you know, you can add in some logging that uh, was done just for the purpose of getting lumber, and that probably messes with the uh, forest a little bit too. But really, probably the bigger problem is the lack of natural thinning fires so the forest grows way denser than it would have historically. Yeah, we could consider doing a controlled burn in here after we do this work, but I'm not sure that it's necessary because we do have good shrub growth already, and that would be one of the main reasons we would do it. And so I guess I'm up in the air about that. It's an option, and maybe as we get farther along in this, it'll become clearer if we should or shouldn't. There are other places uh, in the, on the ranch here where I think it does make a lot of sense to do 
uh, an underburn. This one, I guess I'm, I'm unsure of. So we've walked a little ways up the draw here, and this is a good example of what we're gonna, something we're gonna work on before we've uh, cut anything. So we've got some obvious dominant trees. There's a couple of really nice Douglas fir back here, and then there's a bunch of little suppressed trees behind it, and they're just taking resources from the big trees, and they cause a fire hazard. So we have a couple of ponderosa up here. There's the really big orange one, and then the smaller orange one, and you can see there's a lot of Doug fir growing around them. And those historically wouldn't have been there because the ponderosa has the needles that fall off every year and they're very flammable. And presumably this was burning in here probably every 10 years or so, and you'd have that 10 year accumulation of needles and you'd have a Douglas fir that was only this high and they'd get burned up. But now with the fire suppression, you can see that we have those Doug fir growing up in there. So we're gonna cut them and you'll get to see that it looks a lot better with them gone. Uh, uh, uh.